Hi, I'm Rick Wakeman, and welcome to a very special Rick's Place here on Planet Rock. My co-host this week is my very dear friend, Keith Emerson, as David Kidd, Billy Goat, Jensen Clinker, Interceptor, has actually been in hospital, as some of you may know, having an enlargement operation. Mm. Uh, I'm sure uh, he, he'll be recovering quite soon. It will be a little sore, but I do know people who've had nose jobs before, and it'll, it'll be, be, be quite, all, quite all right. Yes, they're quite successful. Yes, they are quite successful. Uh, the voice you can hear, of course, is that of my great co-host this week, Keith Emerson. Oh, lovely to be here, Rick. That's fantastic, yes. And uh, we've got some exciting features, as you know, this week, such as my personal collection and some not-so-exciting ones, such as your personal collection. Well, OK, well, yeah, I, I, I've got a very good... Uh, I bought some records. Yeah, them, I know, I've uh, seen them. It's not very exciting. Uh, uh, we've got lots of other great. things that are going on this week, including the Lyric Theatre, which I believe you've got uh, a small part. Um... Uh, <laughs> well, I, well I, I have been told you've got a small... Uh, uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm working on it. Yes. You <laughs> yes. So hopefully by the time you've finished playing around with it, it'll become quite a... A, a big part. A big part. Yes. Uh, and we've also got uh, uh, Liz Barnes in as well, the Dame Elizabeth Barnes, who you might have met, and hopefully you'll become one of her supporters club. I uh, would love to support... Uh, well, uh, I'm, what I'm, was her name again? Uh, Liz. Liz. Oh, uh, any and parts it, of her I'd like to support. Well, that's, yes. that's tremendous, because you see uh, the feisty fetus over here, Joel, yes. myself and David Clinker, we are her fan club. We're known as the Lesbians. <laughs> so uh, please feel free to be a lesbian by the end of the show. I'd like to be nominated. And, I, and I think yeah. it's about time we close this introduction before we're taken off the air. It's time for that moment you've all been waiting for. It's uh, it's Rick's week and normally Dave's week. Uh, Dave's week, as you know, has not been very exciting because he's having parts of his body enlarged uh, and they do need enlarging quite a lot. My week's been uh, very straightforward. Just loads of shows with uh, with John Anderson and thanks everybody who's come along and supported us. We have had a great time. What's your week been like, Keith? Um, it's it been up and down. Oh, uh, has it? Yes. I, <laughs> Lucky no, actually, old no, you. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, in Worthing, of course, there's not a great deal of excitement this time of year, but uh, Murray, it, Murray it, and I were actually looking through the paper, uh -huh. and we came across um, the, uh, the the only exciting thing uh, that particular evening, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, but it was a ukulele festival. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Have you ever played the ukulele? Well, I'm learning now because I actually ended it's coming great. away from there. Uh, well, well, I the, bought one. They're brilliant, aren't they? The, the, they are, but mine doesn't stay in tune. I don't know. Ah, uh, was it a cheapy? Yeah, no, it wasn't actually. Oh, it really? cost me about seventy quid. Oh, blimey, me, that's quite expensive. I got one. the chord chart. Um, yeah, I'm trying to learn Lucky Man now. Just uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to just to pee <laughs> Greg off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. The, the I was going to bring it along, but... Um, you know who's a great ukulele fan and a great George Formby fan? is Brian May. Is he really? Yeah, Fanatical. He, he bought yeah. one of George's, George Formby's uh, ukulele, banjo ukuleles at auction recently. Paid a fortune for it. I'm, I'm deadly serious. Wow. They, wow. Uh, the, uh, the George Formby... Um, uh, they have sort of a, a meetings. Yeah. And they go and watch his films... And there's hundreds of them all sitting in the cinema with the ukuleles, Brilliant. and they and they they play and sing along with the. the I'm I'm not joking. George Harrison was a huge George George Formby fan. Yeah, yeah well, meaning on the lamppost at the corner of the street until a oh. little lady comes by. Uh, oh I, me! I don't know, yeah. And Mr. Wu's a window cleaner now. Uh, mm. Oh, there's some of the stuff as well. If in fact we ought to try and slip in a George Formby song somewhere, if you can have a look a bit later. Maybe now, that basically when, means no. When I'm no. cleaning He's windows. Done, yeah. when, oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, all oh, that stuff. Ab absolutely. But so, uh, so what else you been up to? Is that, is that well, it, really? uh, no, I've been actually out buying uh, d David a, uh, a a get well present. Oh, that's really kind. You found something in Worthing, did you? I, yeah, I did find something. Because Worthing's in Worthing, interesting. Yes. Isn't, isn't, wasn't Worthing once called the place where people go to die? Yes, it was. Called <laughs> Uh, uh, Costa Geriatrica. Yeah, yes, yes. And, and Eastbourne's where their parents go. Wasn't uh, the, it? That was, that the, was yes, thing, yeah. something like that. Oh, um, I like Worthing, actually. They, they, it's Worthing's re they've spent a lot of money on Worthing recently. It's probably you going down there. You've done it. Well, it's a very... I have, yes. Very actually, I, 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 I did all my piano co um, competitions in Worthing. Did you? Yes, and I always came second. The, uh, the guy that always came first was... Uh, I wish I could get in touch with him. His name was Peter Searle. And right. I think he went on to become a butcher or something. Oh, um, that but, serves uh, him right. 
Yeah, but he was always number one. I was always number two. Yeah, there we go. That's really uh, well. Uh, what was his name again? Uh, Peter Searle. Well, Peter, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a theme every week that uh, that we set, and our wonderful listener listeners uh they they write in he he writes in uh with with thoughts on the the theme and so we do have a theme every week and this week we've got a theme as well which we set last week what is it right um it's the one that we set last Mm. week Um. but i've had a very very busy week and i and I i i can't remember what it was all right. Yeah. Well, I've I've had a very busy week, and uh, yeah. I'm I don't here's know. Some, I haven't really come somewhere. prepared at all. Preparation H is it? I don't know. Well, I've, I've got. What do you got? I, I don't know. What? Is, have you any idea what the theme is? Has Dave told you anything? Uh, um, no, no. I'm still. Hold looking. on. I've got it. Oh, you got it there. I've got something here. Okay. It's, okay. What is it? It's it's all about Joel's underpants. No, it's no, it's not. Oh, no, it's Are you some, sure. No, it's, it's a, Joel. Help us out here. The theme this week is humorous suggestions of songs that listeners want played at their funeral or at their wedding. Well, I knew that, but I just wanted to see if you were on your toes being the producer. Say. Yes, yes, as quite right. It's this week. People have written to us about things they would like played at their wedding, or in my case, weddings. Well, uh, you, you've uh, had quite a few. Haven't I you? have indeed. <laughs> I'm so fond of the cake. It is. I said. I know. It's, yes. No, I think I, 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 I do. In, I do enjoy weddings. Um, how many you had? Only the one. Just the one. Yes, yes. yes. Um, yeah, I'm a mere novice, really. Anyway, have you got, have you got I, anything? I, 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 I've got one here. Oh, well, it, go on. It says, Rick, I always thought it would be a good idea to have Los Endos. Um, isn't that a, a, a Los Endos or something? Isn't, isn't, that some, isn't, isn't that the camera thing they stick up? Genesis track. By oh, Genesis uh, playing in the coffin. As yeah. the coffin <laughs> went through the curtains. So, so Los Endos is a. Uh, just as everybody was about to get up and leave, the curtains would open, the coffin would come back out, and there'd be an encore. Only when they heard Ethel Merman singing There's No Business Like Show Business would the audience know I wasn't coming out again. And that's from Howard Kirby. He said, Sad old Genesis fan. So what you got there, sir? I've, I've got uh, Highway to Hell, ACDC. Yeah. Um. Fits both weddings and funerals, actually. It does, it does doesn't it? Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, taken from the groom's deceased point of view. Yeah, you know, I'm on a highway to hell. You know, it's very. Uh, that's a very good one. Yeah, I yeah. like that. I'm not sure whether the bride would be over over the moon. Well, it's not a good start, is it? Really? You know? No, I've only ever managed to excite one wife on that. That's when I bought those uh, rocket-shaped condoms. They do them in rocket shapes now. Oh, really? Yeah, she was over the moon. Yeah, I've, uh, <laughs> uh, I've got one here from Sue Chapman. She says, I heard about a wedding where the happy couple, couple's first dance was to I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Oh. Are you too? <laughs> well, hopefully on their wedding night, she found it. Got one from uh, Ralph uh, Juronek, actually. Ralph uh, what, Neck? Yeah, Juronek, yeah. I've Juronek. Got, yeah, lovely. Um, <laughs> well, no, it's a song so I'd like for my funeral. Uh, uh, another one bites the dust. Queen. That's, yeah, that's quite good. Yeah. Um, uh, and when he's being cremated, uh, smoke gets in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. I like that. Uh, Fear the Reaper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I like. I like. So uh, we've got some more coming up later from Are people we? from, from weddings right. and funerals, okay. and so we shall be doing a load more of those. And we'll also be setting the theme, believe it or not, for next week later on, uh, which uh, we haven't actually decided what it's going to be. So while there's some jolly, wonderful music being played, we'll have a little think about what uh, next week's theme can Absolutely. be. Absolutely. My rant this week yes. is very personal to Planet Rock. Uh, I am. Uh, a tea lover uh, and I like all sorts of tea I collect I can see what's coming here I'm going to get the blame you are you are, you are, <laughs> you are going to be uh, feisty fetus will be slightly punished for this uh, the the situation is I'm very fond of tea uh, 
I like bog standard tea, but bog standard tea that I like, I'm afraid, and I don't mind mentioning the name because it is well known. I like, I do like the old PG Tips pyramid bags because they're one of the few that actually put a serious amount of tea leaves in it. Uh, I do like uh, all sorts of different uh, raw tea. My Mrs. Rachel, we get it. There's a wonderful tea place in in Lincoln up Steep Hill, which have hundreds of all different sorts of teas from all over the world and roots and twigs and leaves. So we get loads of that, and it's really Really, really, really good. But here at Planet Rock, obviously they are not tea drinkers. They have tea bags, so they're obviously buying bulk from some horrendous little it's place. PG tips. It well, if it's PG, t- it's <laughs> not PG <laughs> tips. Well, you must buy it from somewhere else then, because they're. I mean, I, I will. I will hold this up to the mic so because you you can all have a look here, Omar, because this is absolute crap. Oh, My yeah. wee has more colour in it than yeah. that. Yeah, well, I haven't seen that, your that, wee. That, but, uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll do you a little sample. You you I will oh. indeed. <laughs> the, this is absolute. Because it's just it's just horrendous. It has no I taste. I know where you're coming from. Yeah. It, I well. mean, <laughs> uh, some of the companies that sell those bulk tea bags, I'm sure they're made specifically by the company to put less and less. So there's like three little bits of tea bag in it. Mm-hmm. So there's absolutely no flavour whatsoever. At the moment in the show, for those of you who are still listening, uh, including, of course, Dave Kidd, Jensen, Clinker, Interceptor, who is probably lying in his hospital sobbing. bed, sobbing away with a great big and. Uh, uh, oh, that's not <laughs> excellent. Well, just trying out his well, present. Okay. Uh, he's probably in bed with one of those sort of like hood things over his regions that he's had enlarged over his nose. Uh, uh, but I believe we've got some Ask Keith Henricks this week. Yeah, we've got some stuff in that applies to both of you. So, Feisty, you better ask the questions then. I will. This comes from Mark Sims uh, in Malaga in Spain, and he says, Hi, Rick. It's Thursday. Actually, it isn't, but there seems to be a time warp in your studio. Starts off with that. That's well, that's very for, for For those of you who are listening for the first time, yeah. and probably the last, when we do the, uh, uh, the play, it's always a Thursday, it because is. Mark Jeeves, who writes them, is the old stiff neck he's stuck on a Thursday so that's why Mr Sims suggested it's Thursday but it's totally relevant but it yeah. does use up valuable broadcasting valuable time, time. Uh, what Mr Sims wants to know from either Rick or Keith is which piece of music do you wish you had written but didn't classical or otherwise great show Keith. ah great question yes very interesting that was one of the questions that I got asked when we did that uh, thing for the Kegel yes, magazine okay I, I actually uh, th- um, and I put down Tarkas I said I wanted a <laughs> oh, I said really? I always <laughs> when, I, when I got the Tarkas out because uh, it's just a great package in everything the music was great fabulous cover Oh yeah, well, fabulous yes, cover and great and great yeah. music. So that's what I put down. But I presume he's he's thinking about music, not that either one of us Anything. did. What would you like to have? What would you like well, to? Well, I didn't know. I, uh, uh, Elizabethan uh, rock is. Oh, it the Elizabethan rock. That's a sweet little thing. Yeah, I, but because I, I think it's, it's just so much fun and liveliness in it's that. It's a sweet piece. little thing. Um, it is. Well, it, what it, about it is. what about away from us? Is there anything that you <coughs> that you've heard away from, from us? Yeah. Well, the, heard... actually, let me come to the other one, which is the Palais. Something was it? Oh, Pally, I did a few Pally. You did it because it, yeah. you, you play piano on that, and it's very much ragtime. It goes into a ballet. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know the sort piano. of melodic uh, thing. Yeah. yeah. Pally does something. Keyboard? Is it a keyboard thing? Anything you like. <coughs> it was a keyboard oh. thing for me. I, I, I always thought uh, Argent's Hold Your Head Up was a great track. That, yeah. Good, yeah. good song. Yeah. Um, I probably would have liked. I would have liked to have written. What? What? What's the biggest selling <laughs> record ever? That's what I'd like thriller. to have written. Because the, the biggest selling album. It's, it's, I would have liked to have written Thriller because then I wouldn't be sitting here in the broom cupboard. I'd be. <laughs> I'd be lounging in some mansion somewhere, wouldn't I? Really? What would you like to? have well, actually, no, I've just been thinking about that. Uh, because you contributed an awful lot to what Cat Stevens did. And, uh, yeah. And also okay. David Bowie. Uh-huh. Uh, or it's a, a space uh, oddity, yeah, was space, it? Yeah, and life on Mars, all that lot, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, that it's those bits that, uh, you know, it, it goes down to David Bauer and it goes down to <laughs> Cat Stevens, but the, if you really listen to those tracks, it, it's the accompaniment that, that really... Uh, Make the hooks, which go to make the the album as a whole. Do, you know, do I, I don't know. I don't know how much you got paid for that. Do I make the, the check out to cash, or uh, is this to, <laughs> to your personal no, account? I mean, no. no. Did, did did you? Hey, uh, Keith Emerson, <laughs> thirty-eight pound. <laughs> I, I did one. I got, uh, no, I got nine quid for "Morning Is Broken," 
and I got uh, nine quid for morning is broken. And I, Cat Stevens, okay. and I got uh, uh, I think it was forty forty. It was forty five fifty quid from uh, for the life, you know, for the uh, hunky dory sessions. You know, but having said that, I got so much out of working things out of doing them. You know, it's a bit like you go on telly, you get paid fifty quid. But the kudos and the things you get from it is worth its weight in gold. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You do learn an awful lot, you know, working with other people. Uh, I, I, and, I, and you help to make people rich and you end mm, up with... Mm. Really? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, played on Rod, I played on Rod Stewart's first solo album. Did you really? I yeah. never knew that. Everything about an old raincoat or something? I don't oh, know. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, what did you, how much did you get paid? Well, actually, uh, I, I met with Rod Stewart last year. And, and you, never got, invi- you never got paid. Well, no, no, wait. He invited me round for, for Sunday lunch in, in Hollywood. He's a lovely guy. He and, is, yeah. um, you, you know Rod, I right? Do. Yeah, and his wife is beautiful, and uh, he's got a lovely house and everything. And um, I walked in, uh, and we were sitting at the dining table, and uh, he said, Here, Keith, how much did I pay you? Uh, when you played on my first album and I said uh, I said 50 quid Rod <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he laughed he laughed at everything he said hey hey give that person down I just I, you know I, I paid him 50 quid on the first and I said yeah Rod the uh, the, the check bounced <laughs> you know I me interest uh, <laughs> oh brilliant oh he probably <laughs> left the country did he uh, <laughs> what? I played football once with Rod in, in, oh, Califor- in California. He's got was, his own football pitch, hasn't he? He has, indeed. And when he, yeah. that's when he was married to Brit. Yeah. And uh, they'd had a bit of a row. And she turned up in a limo after through the game yeah. and made him go home. And uh. he took the ball with him. So we all had to... We just all. Oh, that, was that, oh, that was the end of the game. He went. Home, he went home with sport. it. Went, it's my ball. And he went home. I like Rod. He's a good man. <laughs> Fifty quid, eh? Because we have an entire full cast for the Lyric Theatre. We have, of course, Dame Elizabeth Barnes. Hello. Who's here with all her fans, who, as we all know, are called lesbians. <laughs> we have. We have <laughs> Colonel Darren Clinker. Well, don't call me that. Uh, so, oh, not you don't like being called. No, Darren's no. a nice name. So, uh, <laughs> who's here as well? And of course, my great friend Keith Emerson, who is as a as a has a big part now uh, when we first came in <laughs> uh, felt we thought you had a small part but it's turned out <laughs> as we saw in the dressing rooms as we were changing that in fact you, yes, have, a, well, you, have, a, you have a big I'm, part thank you I'm and, very proud of and it and Feisty has one but we have a winner from last week which is amazing now as you know for those who are listening uh, the prize is we select a, a CD out of the box the discard box here <laughs> at Planet Rock that nobody wants mm-hmm. uh, we sign it we send it without postage on so you have to pay when it arrives uh, and it is amazing how collectible in, this in load a, of crap in a brown, is. Uh, oh yeah and this, I'm, I'm being serious Keith it's what we do we send them complete rubbish uh, oh. and, th- and they seem to quite like it they love it they do indeed mm. and Simon uh, uh, Parrock uh, he came up with peaches something better change walk on by hanging around nice and sleazy strange little girl golden brown and always the uh, sun which of course are tracks from the cult the Stranglers. The Stranglers, yeah. I even got it wrong and I thought I was... <laughs> what, 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 what did you say first of all? I said the cult, but it's not that. And don't try and misconstrue my sentence. I, I, I wouldn't... Well, well done. You'll, you'll need that, won't you? Because that's, that's the one. Now, in this week's Lyric Theatre, which is tremendously exciting, we do mm. have, of course, we have Darren... Linker, and we also have the feisty feet. Don't call me that. Uh, well, Darren, you like being called Darren, who is here resplendent in a lumberback sh- lumber lumberjack shirt. Uh, class, isn't it, Keith? Look at that. That's really class. It is. Yeah. If you like to lay down, we'll have a game of chess later. And we'd like to welcome to Feisty Fetus, who. Uh, <laughs> He's been here the whole time, anyway. So. Yeah, he has. Uh, and Dame Elizabeth Barnes. Hello. Yay! Yay! Huge applause from the lesbians there. <laughs> and of course, the man with the most enormous part in this, we play my good friend Keith. <laughs> this week, would you believe you've got to find eight tracks in this play? from ELP and the curtains open to reveal Joel the feisty fetus standing centre stage ELP extra large parts extra large <laughs> 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 well, are you sure it was parts uh, <laughs> well, we'll keep it that way keep it as parts yes, okay and now Planet Rock proudly present the Rick Wakeman Rip 
Laboratory Company with the Lyric Theatre. It's the day that generally arrives two days after Tuesday. Oh, God, it's Thursday again. <laughs> I can't believe it's always bloody Thursday. And Rick is on his own at home. Oh, bloody, where is everything? All I want is some dinner and I can't find the food, the saucemans, or for that matter, the kitchen. Since David went away for his annual facelift and enlargement, <laughs> I've been in a right state. I'm starving. I need a wash and I can't use the loo since uh, the unpleasantness. Mr. Wakeman, my name is Bender. Jeremy Bender. I live next door normally, but I can no longer live in my house due to the appalling smell. Well, what's that got to do with me? The smell is coming through the wall between our houses. It must be your fault. Get it fixed, or I'll sue. That's tremendous acting. Thank you, I gotta go. (laughs) Very good. Oh, blimey. This is the sort of thing that David would have fixed. Whatever will I do? Mr. Wakeman... I'm Lisbian from over the road, and I have no water at all in my house. I've checked the tank in the loft, and it's empty. For no logical reason, I hold you completely responsible for this. I intend to hire a roving gang of hitmen to bump you off if the problem isn't resolved immediately. Oh, no, this is getting worse and worse. I wonder what could be going wrong. This problem is like performing braid salad surgery. Now what? Hello? Anglian water? What do you want? Yeah? What? You're telling me the entire water supply for the whole town goes through my downstairs toilet? But I blocked that up days ago. I can't unblock it till David comes back. He's the only one with breathing apparatus. What's that? I need a plumber. But I don't know any. Actually, I do. Ah... Here he is. It's my old mate Keith Emerson. Come to save the day. Welcome back, my friend, to the show that never ends. I'm so glad you could attend. Come inside. Come inside. I I got here as soon as I could. What's what's the problem? Do you need more keyboard lessons again? No, I don't need any more keyboard lessons, thank you. Uh, Because, frankly, I don't think I can teach you anything. Oh, really? Am, Am I that good? Uh, no, you're just unteachable. Oh, right, well, thanks, thanks for coming round. I hope you can help. I have a plumbing problem. Oh, God. Um, OK, uh, drop your trousers. Uh, let's take a look. <laughs> <laughs> no, a real plumbing problem. I've blocked the downstairs loo and no-one has any water. I heard you'd given up the music business and started your own plumbing company. Ah, yes, that's right, Rick. Yes, selling millions of records, touring the world, playing to hundreds of thousands of people and being awash with money and women just didn't fulfil me. (laughs) I (laughs) realised... That's brilliant. I realised a few years ago that what I really wanted was to work with central heating and domestic water (laughs) installations. That's when I started up... Immersion Lee Cam Plumber. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That's. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> that is that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, I thought you'd bought a touring fair. I did. I did, Rick. Yes, I. I had dodgems, waltzers, and a big wheel. <laughs> I had all the rides made from solid gold and encrusted with diamonds. Then I charged £500 to go on them. I wanted to attract a better class of people to my fair, but it failed. I learned quickly that what I really should have got was a fun fair for the common man. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Well, that's all very interesting, but what about my toilet? Uh, no problem. Uh, I've got my mate Eddie outside in the main sewer. Right. He's, he's going to free the blockage uh, with a small amount of uh, plastic explosive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I'll, I'll just radio down there now and get him to talk us through with what's going on, all right? <laughs> uh, Are you ready, Eddie? OK, fire. <laughs> Oh, God, blimey. That was the biggest blockage I've ever seen. It's all clear, though. It's all clear now. 
but look at the state of the bathroom. There's stuff all up the walls. David will go mad when he sees that. Oh, calm down, Rick. Just consider it a blessing oh, right. that I was able to come round and fix this mess in the first place. Oh, right. Needless to say, Rick, you're a lucky man. <laughs> So, Feisty, following the wonderful Lyric Theatre, which I believe will go down in history... Yeah, great. Probably go, actually, probably go down the toilet. Uh, <laughs> you you have another Ask Keith and Rick for us there. I do. Hi, Rick and Keith. Oh, excuse me, I'll just stop you. Please don't keep saying I do. It just gives me shivers. <laughs> oh, I've, okay, I've yeah. heard it so many times now. Bad memories for you. It, 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 yeah. it, is, it is a bit... Bit, bit worrying. So okay. if you could, uh, <laughs> if you could avoid just keep saying I, I do. Mm. Um, <clears throat> ask, <laughs> ask Rick and Keith. Hi, Rick and Keith. Out of all your keyboards that you have owned and played over the years, which one is or was your favourite, and why? And Rick, the mighty organ does not count. Uh, all right. Mm. I think the free ones come top of the list. Really. Which one? The free ones. The free ones. Yes, yes, they do. You and I'd agree with the Moog anyway, I would think, wouldn't we? Uh, yeah, Bob, I think so. The they they definitely Bob. defined uh, what, what you and I did. Yes. They gave us something that we, know we could actually, for the first time, compete with the dreaded six-string twangers, couldn't oh, we? Oh, God, yes, <laughs> yes. And they hated it. Yes. Because it would cut, the Moog cut through concrete, didn't it? Well, it could do that, yes. I um, mean, you really sussed it out great with ELP. No guitarist. <laughs> Sensational. Yes, yes. Uh, well, it, it, it could definitely uh, remove gastric disturbances. <laughs> uh, is, is, which, there any, uh, is there any truth in the rumour that it was nearly help? Is, that, is there any truth in that rumour? Well, it, I think it helped me a few times. Um, yes. Uh, no, know. I mean, with the H being you-know-who, Hendrix, was that ever, ever true? What, 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 me playing with Jimmy? With, well, there, with there, Jimmy. Was, there was, a, there was, I mean, I know you played with Jimmy, but there was mm. a story that at one stage the band was going to be helped, but like Hendrix... Oh, that, like oh a, that, that one came out after the ELP uh, thing had got. So they, they kind of got the chronological order out of place. Oh, OK. So uh, after the ELP thing was formed, uh, they learned that uh, Greg and I were checking on Mitch Mitchell as the potential drummer, and Mitch had said, well, maybe I can get Jimmy involved. So that... But it was all slightly... Well, if know, Mitch had been the drummer, it would have been ELM. And then if Andrew had come, it would have been Helm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it would. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I'm not so, the, so there was an element of... Uh, there was a little element of truth. It was just all in the wrong order and things. It like. was in the wrong chronological <laughs> order, yes. It, it, uh, but I, quite honestly, I don't think that it, it would have worked out because Jimmy was so different in his own way. Yeah. And, uh, and I'd actually got very used to playing as a trio, really. Yeah. You know? And... Um, you know, we all know the battle that we've, we, you and I have had with guitar players who crank yes. up to number 11. That's so it. The, the <clears> Moog <throat> was... And never listen to one note you play. Yeah. And then the Moog came along. Yeah. They hated it, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's true, though. They really hated it, because suddenly, yeah. not only were you louder than them, but you could cut through concrete. Yes, yes. Oh, it did piss them off. Yeah. I loved it. Thank yeah. you, Bob. <laughs> Bless him. In fact, one of the <laughs> loveliest times I ever had uh, and, uh, and it wasn't really an interview was when you, me and Bob sat in New York in a room doing a radio thing from, uh, down the line for about an hour and a half mm -hmm. and and it was, just, it was just fantastic because I think you'd, both of us were, Bob Moog never really understood what an amazing contribution he'd actually made. He never... He was such a mild-mannered man, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he, indeed he was. He And he loved a good laugh, uh, which uh, which you obviously... Uh, uh, he was laughing so much at, uh, at your stories, and uh, it's great. I, you know, I think he was just in amazement over his creation that he'd uh, worked. He, I don't think he actually realised that... Uh, what an effect it had on such a vast audience oh, and internationally, you know. Yeah. What other instrument then apart from would, would, would you? Oh, I don't know. I still like a piano. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of the original instrument. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how you, how you write your your, <coughs> your music. But I mean, I sometimes write away from the piano. Uh, I carry 
manuscript around with me. I don't yeah. use computers. Yeah, but, I, uh, I, write, I, I write stuff down, but I do most of the stuff at the piano, but I do write, I still write stuff down in the old manuscript. Uh, you never mentioned the Hammond. And well, the, actually, uh, well, the, the reason for the Hammond for me was because I played on so many duff pianos yeah. that uh, I decided to buy my own instrument and to I take you around t- with I remember me. you the last time you already mentioned about uh, buying the wrong organ, if you'll pardon the expression. Well, that, well that's right. <laughs> but, you know, but, uh, nothing y- worse than having the wrong organ, is there? No, really? there's nothing. No, no. No, nothing worse than that. But no. you, you, you're familiar with Brian Auger, of course. I am indeed. And uh, I, I've spoken with him about it. Both of us heard about Jimmy Smith. Mm. Uh, you know, in our formative years, and uh, wondered what instrument that was. Mm. So Brian August, uh, August started off as a piano player, and um, you know decided to buy a Hammond organ. But he bought the, I think it was uh, an A one hundred or something. Mm. It wasn't the B three that the Jimmy Smith used. Mm. It was, um, and well, I bought an L one hundred. And Great it machine. was close. I, it, it had the word Hammond on it, <laughs> but that was about as close mm. as it was to the original thing. Now, I tell, I tell you, we, we all to play a little bit of music because it's meant to be a rock station. Uh, but afterwards, I asked you something. Well, in fact, I mentioned something last time you were here, and I said I'd get you to tell it. And uh, if you're thinking of, of detuning or going to another channel, don't, because after the news... I can promise you a story that will either have you howling or have us possibly taken off the air. I promised you a story uh, before the news, and this is a cracker. This is one that, that you told me, Keith, some years ago, and I fell about laughing. Jimmy Smith was a huge influence on so many, mm. so many players. Yeah. Uh, and you're the only person I know who actually got to meet him. Yes, well... Uh, and it was a little unusual, wasn't it? Sorry? A little unusual. It was... Well, it was. We we got very close. Uh, <laughs> would uh, you like to tell the story? Cause I, it's I would like to, Rick, yes. Um, I think I was in Chicago. I was playing with the, the Alps to... Uh, uh, I don't know. It was a huge stadium. And I happened to notice that uh, Jimmy Smith was playing in a small club outside of Chicago just after we finished so I asked my limo driver could you take me to this club after I finished the show so I came directly off of the stage you know soaking wet mm. and into the limo limo driver drives me to the club and escorts me in where I have a, a round table right in front of where the Hammond organ is and I'm just seated there looking up at this you know, the maestro's yeah. instrument and going, oh my God, I'm actually going to be seeing Jimmy Smith. For so the you were first directly time. in front of Jimmy Smith's organ? I was right there. Mm. I was virtually in front of his organ, yes. That's marvellous. And uh, he came out on stage. A big organ. It was, it was, it, it, mm. it was big, yes. Mm. Um, I, I would hope that mine measured up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. But he came out and he sort of t- took a look at everybody and scowled Uh, you've got to uh, imagine that this was a part of uh, Chicago which was um, it it was um, it was a lot of uh, black people it was a black area yeah it was a black area area, yes black blues area Chicago yes Uh, but I and I kind of stood out you know and uh, which of course Mm. uh, didn't lose the attention of uh, Jimmy Smith who sort of looked at me and he got through about two pieces and uh, stopped everything and he looked at me and there I am sitting up like mm. my jaws dropping like, wow this is so cool and he uh, he played something like um, Daisy Daisy every year and something oh. else you know which is real corny um, yeah. sort of um, you know theatre organ star and he said uh, oh you honkies dig that shit, don't you and I'm, oh. I, I, well, you know, what can you say? I didn't really no. say anything. And um, but still it was still a Jimmy Smith. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, when of you, course, yeah. When you see your hero, you're, you're, you put you put up with it. You're very forgiving. You know, it's like, okay. Well, he's, you know, he's obviously had a bad day or something. Mm. Um, anyway, it was about twenty years later, and uh, I'd, I'd moved to California, and uh, at the Catalina Bar and Grill, I saw Jimmy Smith 
was playing there. I thought, ooh, OK, um, I'll go along there. And it's a very, I suppose, what, 50, 70 people in uh, the Catalina Bar and Grill. This time I stayed <laughs> well away from the stage. Yeah. I, I I stayed in a little so booth at his, the back. His big organ was in the distance. His bit, yes, yes, right. but you could still see it. You know. I'm sure you could. It, it and, mm. and of course, it the sonority poked through quite oh, did considerably. It? Yes, it mm. was. Uh, it was still Jimmy. Yeah, mm. Uh, mm. one could tell. And it was, <laughs> you know, it, it was good. After that, I went up to there's a little bar area, and the owner of the Hammond B3 that uh, Jimmy was playing on came up to me and he said um, you've really got to meet Jimmy Smith and I hesitated on that one because remembering the Chicago incident yeah. and uh, I thought well I don't I'm not too sure if he'd like to see me you know yeah. so he said no no Jimmy would love to see you I said well why don't you go back into the dressing room and ask him because I'm not going to sort of make a fool of myself here, no. you know. So the the owner of the B3 goes back and comes back moments later and says, yeah, Jimmy really wants to see you. So everybody there at the bar is going, wow, Keith, yeah, you've really got to go and, yeah, this is great, this is history. I went, all right then. So I go into the great man's dressing room and he's sitting there with a big glass of cognac and... Uh, slunched in a corner and so the uh, owner of the B3 says to Jimmy um, Jimmy this is uh, this is Keith Keith Emerson so Jimmy sort of scowls at me and he goes Keith 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 and I and I so I I said <coughs> yeah Jimmy um yeah I'm, I'm, my name's Keith Emerson um I went out to shake his hand, and then he grabbed my meat and two veg <laughs> between the legs there. You know, and so it sort of came out like you can't. You know. And, so and it was kind of a strangled did, did retort. He, did he squeeze quite? Was it? A, a, it was wasn't it, a gentle squeeze. No. no. Did you have to? Did he sort of just take his hand away? Or did you have to like? Pull his hand away, or say, "Do you mind letting go of my?" Well, um, I, 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 I coughed. <laughs> Um, and he eventually it, let go. Uh, he, he did eventually le leave leave go. Yes, and um, you know I went back out to the uh, to the bar. <laughs> oh, okay, go on. I went to the, I went to the bar area, and everybody <laughs> is standing around. Like, wow, how did he go with your meeting with Jimmy Smith? <laughs> and I said he grabbed my balls, <laughs> and, and they went. What? I said, he, Jimmy Smith grabbed my balls. But we got around to thinking that maybe this is the keyboard player's new handshake. <laughs> Hi, Rick. How you doing? Oh! <laughs> well, we've had my personal collection, which was a fantastic track from Killer Instinct, which I'm sure thrilled everybody at home. Uh, this is the moment, well, I think uh, this, is, this is Keith's personal collection, which uh, if we'll make a cup of tea or do something interesting. Well, what you got then, Keith? Well, actually, uh, I, I chose this. Uh, I chose this uh, record actually because um, you know musicians um, uh, often. Uh, did you know this actually, Wick? Uh, I'm going to get round to this. Um, that your hearing is less acute after a hearty meal, when you're digesting large amounts of food. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, apparently, musicians often avoid eating before a concert for this reason. Did you know that? That, no, that was I didn't. in today's uh, standard, yeah. Really? But so the reason why I'm mentioning food here is because the track that I chose is by the New Beats and it's called I Like Bread and Butter. He likes toast and jam. Jam, yes. That's, that's what my great, baby feeds me. I hate to say it, but I, I think that's such a great track. I love silly, silly tracks every now and then. Oh, uh, yeah. And the voice, the vocal sound was great too, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, normally when Dave Klinker. Uh, yes. Jensen interceptor Billy Goat has his track. This is a, a moment that I normally go off to sort of 
block the old sewage system here, ah. which doesn't take much doing, that has to be said. Um, but I think I might just stay in here and listen to this, because that's, that's a good choice. If you're listening, uh, Dave Billy Goat Clinker Interceptor, in your hotel bed with the hospital radio on, um, whilst you're having your <laughs> enlarged, uh, then this is class, mate. Uh, that was... Uh, was it? Oh, New beats, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I love bread and butter. Yeah, yeah and yeah. and a bit of toast and jam. Yes, right. And, yeah. and, th- and we'll have some more. Ask Ricks and ask Keiths uh, after the after the break. And remember, if you want to write in uh, and ask us anything, it, uh, write to Rick at PlanetRock dot com or to the website, which is uh, PlanetRock dot com forward slash Rick, mm. and about anything you like. And uh, it'll probably get totally ignored, but you never know, you just might make it on the air. <laughs> ask Keith and ask Rick, and this comes from Terry Morris. I met Terry. Terry's a good good friend of the owner of, uh, of Planet Rock, and she came along to a show. Hi, Terry. Lovely lady. And, um, in fact, one of the things that she asked me when, when she came to the concert, she said, oh, all the press always used to make out that you and Keith were enemies. I always remember when you and I were having lunch at Morton's in London, Mm. We're having a good laugh, and a yeah. good, and somebody yeah. came over, and I thought I'll never forget this. They came and said, "It's so nice to see that you two have made up." I just thought that was absolutely hilarious, and, and <laughs> you said something like, "Well, I was I was unaware that we had anything to make up about it." And they went, "Oh, we understand." Yeah. And, and it's great what the, the press used to do. And automatically, anyway, she, know, and her yeah. question to you uh, is, Keith, do you still have a Norton Commando? Ah. Is what? that the name for your, um... <laughs> <laughs> what is a Norton Commando? It's a... Um, it's oh, not- well, yeah, you can get a 750 or an 850. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I do now have an 850. Do uh, you? Yes, but uh, the 750 got stolen. You're joking. Yeah, no, I had it all chromed up and everything, and it got nicked. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, all, all of my motorcycles get nicked. Like, I had a very customised uh, Harley in California, and that got stolen. Oh, had all the brain salad surgery logos over it and all that. So I don't think the guy would have got very far <laughs> driving it down Main Street. Did you, you know. start off with things like a... Ba- you, was it a Bantam? Was it a Bantam? No. I actually started off... a BS, off. A BSR? Was it BSR Bantam? Was that, is that right? Uh, it, there was that, yeah. No, I actually started off on a Honda monkey bike, which was a little tiny thing which you could fold up and stick it in the back of your car. So oh, you can right. get around London, right? Right, yeah. And uh, I got run over so many times <laughs> by cab drivers. You know, yeah. you know, they, you, all they'd see was his head passing by the window and they'd turn into you and you'd end up on the curb, as I did many times. I got fed up with it. So I thought, well, I might as well, if I'm going to ride a motorcycle, get a proper one, yeah. you know? the same as like um lemmy from motorhead yeah. giving me uh, uh hitler youth daggers to stick in the organ rather than little screwdrivers i mean he said if you're going to use a knife mate use a real one yeah so i you chose the same aspect on motorcycles so uh, exactly. just chose the biggest machine so what have you got at the moment bike wise uh bike wise i've got an 850 that's uh, quick isn't it? It, it it's not bad but uh it's a hell of a compression to kick over so uh I don't know if anybody can recommend an electric starter for it, because Norton's were never very good at doing electric starters. It's time for the theme again, uh, uh, Keith, oh, and as oh, you know, okay. it, this is uh, what piece of music people would like played at their weddings or their funerals, funerals yeah. and some people think it's exactly the same thing. What have you got there? Um, OK, so uh, for a funeral, uh, says Tom, for a funeral it has to be I Love the Dead by Alice Cooper. And for a wedding, slide it in. <laughs> uh, so I did it, squeeze it in there. got to squeeze it in. Re- referring to the finger sliding in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> okay. right, we'll move on there. <laughs> I don't understand that, Keith. Could you no. explain that to me more clearly? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got, Rick? <clears throat> I've got from Robert Sanderson, and he says... Um, uh, songs for burials, going underground by the Jam, oh. and down down by Status Quo. <laughs> mm. Songs for cremations, burn by Deep Purple, <laughs> Holy Smoke and Iron Maiden, 
Fire by the Crazy World of Arthur Brown. Yeah, um, <laughs> Ashes to Ashes by David Bowie, <laughs> and Disco Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific songs yeah. for weddings in Norfolk, which is where I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is which is where I live. My perfect cousin by The Undertones. <laughs> 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 that is brilliant. Oh, wow. that is absolutely brilliant. I tell you what, Robert, if we had a prize to send you, we would, but we haven't. So we won't. <laughs> we, we do a section every week called Excuse Me While I Kiss This Guy. Mm. Now, this is not a section to do with people who kiss guys. guys. Uh, it, it's, we, we don't have a section like that, although I'm, I'm sure probably it exists somewhere within Planet Rock because um, they say one out of five, but, you know, <laughs> and, um, and there's five yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Excuse Me While I Kiss This Guy is, is misheard lyrics. Now, as you know, Hendrix, which the, mm. the actual line is feisty. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. Yes. Often comes out, excuse me while I kiss this guy. We yes. ask people to write in what they have had from misheard lyrics. Mm. So, uh, coming up in a minute, um, Feisty will be handing us, and we don't get to see these beforehand, some misheard lyrics, and I'm sure you will be enthralled. Mm. Just as wait. enthralled you were when Jimmy grabbed hold of the old meat and two veg. We're on to excuse me while I kiss this guy. Have you ever ever had any experiences of misheard lyrics or words or whatever? Oh, I should have written a book on the, the misquotes that my uh, ex-wife um, um, came up with. The one was uh, uh, referring to a, a film. It was Escape from Albatross. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really should have like, written them down. I, I can say this because I, I mean, she would still laugh about it, and so would uh, my sons. You know, so that's, yeah. Uh, I had a Swiss wife once, so you know, she got all her words. My, and, but the, one of the strange things, I took her to, to Brentford Football Club when I was a director there. Yeah, and uh, we were playing Aldershot, and uh, and uh, she didn't understand football at all. And she, this is absolutely true. I'm staying with the chairman, you know, and. Uh, and she said, uh, and the chairman of Aldershot, and she's always said what she said. She said to the chairman of Aldershot, I would have thought you would have had a better team than you have. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, he went, uh, 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 why, is, why is that? And uh, she hadn't got a programme or anything like that. She said, well, uh, she said, I, I would have thought you have so many more people to choose from. And this is, and this is absolutely for real. Oh, no. And he went, well, she said, well, you know, Brentford, they just have to have the people in Brentford. Mm. And I'm trying to sort of start to explain, said, no, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> and she said, but you can choose people from all the shops. <laughs> so you have all the, the people from all the shops who can play for you. Said, and so I had to quite, sort of quietly tell you, and Dan Tyler, as the chairman, just went, Nice lady, don't bring her again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry. anyway, I've got I've got one here from. No. Um, this is from Bob Yorston. Uh, excuse me while I touch this guy's got here. Uh, he says, Dear Rick and Keith, when I was a young lad, I bought Iron Maiden's debut album and loved it. However, long before the days of being able to look up lyrics on the internet, I had only my ears to rely on. I was convinced that during the, uh, during the track, Iron Maiden, uh, Paul Dano sang the line, See the blood flow, washing dishes up above my head. It was only years later that I realised I was, it was actually watching it shed. But it seems I wasn't the only one. A few years later, I was listening to an interview with Bruce Dickinson, who, of course, replaced Paul as Maiden's lead singer, and he said he had to ask about the lyrics for our Maiden before he sang it live on stage, as he, too, thought it was washing dishes. So, uh, do we get to hear that? We do. Well, let's get to hear it. Uh, uh, do you know the track? No, I, I'm not familiar with that. No, no. nor do I. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Iron Maiden from a track that uh, Keith and I didn't know, uh, but we know now, don't we? We do now. We Absolutely. do now. And yes, then, was that as thrilling for you as being grabbed in the meat and two veg by Jimmy? Uh, yes. Mm. What? <laughs> that, <laughs> sorry, it did make me slightly deaf. That uh, was, <laughs> <laughs> it'd make a great t shirt, wouldn't it? I <laughs> know. No, Jimmy Smith grabbed my ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would. You'd sell shit loads of it, wouldn't it? I'll, I'll come up with a shirt for that, yeah. yeah. Excellent. The secret handshake for keyboard. <laughs> the secret <laughs> handshake for keyboard players, yeah, yes. The, uh, the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. There's no answer to that, is there, really? <laughs> uh, this comes from... Uh, uh, it doesn't actually say who it comes from, um, but is the first part of his of his email address is rubbish nut. Um, mm. 
Uh, he says, I, I thought White Snakes ain't no love in the heart of the city was anal love in the heart of the city. Uh, um, I mean, <laughs> I would think there's... I would think you're probably more right in the average city. Uh, I think my version is better. Um, oh, I think my version is better Branston. Maybe it's called Branston. Because um, he's in a pickle? Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> there you go. Well, that's marvellous. Well, let's have a little listen to Anal Love now, especially for Rubbish Nut and his Branston. Oh. It's time for another Ask Rick and Keith, and because we can't ask ourselves, um, uh, we have to ask little the feisty fetus, the young egg himself. I'm practising my reading And congratulations, well. I believe you've grown some hair on your chest this week, is yeah, that? thanks for that. Yeah, that's very true. OK, Kevin Gibson <laughs> from Middlesbrough. Uh, wants to know Rick and Keith Rick what is your favourite Yes album and why and Keith that applies to ELP for you my favourite ELP album <sighs> oof uh, I don't think I've, I've got one really probably uh, be a different answer every week wouldn't it really it would yeah it's you know you just uh, you get asked this question so many times and uh, you know I like all of the things I think that the one that gives the most perspective on all of the the talents of Greg Lake and Carl Palmer is possibly um works volume one but it's not a combined working thing and I I that's really the reason why Emerson, Lake and Palmer were called Emerson, Lake and Palmer because we, we were, you know three different entities and of course you did point out it, it makes it very difficult if you want to get rid of one of the members because you're still known as Emerson, Lake and that's Palmer That's quite right, <laughs> and also you were called Emerson, Lake because that was also the, the name of the of the members really. it, it was indeed, yeah. yes so that was that was also quite quite important It, it was important you know, at, at, yeah. at, the, at the time yeah. um, y Yes, well, in, in alphabetical order by the the way, because that had to be, you know, politically correct. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't sound right, does it? Palmer Lake and no, it doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, that, that was my excuse, anyway. <laughs> no, you know, you're I, right, I was though, very just, modest. It, 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 no, you're, no, you're quite right. Um, it, just trying to think, it'd be interesting to, of what. Um, and now here's one. I've just thought you've just given me an idea for next week's theme. If, for example, like ELP. Emerson, Lake and Palmer. There's also, you know, uh, you know, CSY, Crosby, Stills, Nash and yeah. CSN and Y. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's an acronym. Is that, is that what it is when you take the, the first letter? Come up with bands, come up with names of musicians that could form a band and the acronym... The, the acronym that comes from it, <laughs> so you can so you can come up with all sorts of musicians. They oh, don't right. necessarily good idea. And then you you come up, and then that's the acronym. Their initials become the acronym of the band you fancy. I think you could have an awful lot of fun with that, mm. and I reckon there'll be at least two we might be able to read out. So what it is? <laughs> so, rem so remember, it, you've got to come up with a band put together where they're imaginary, an, an imaginary, and you've got to come up with an imaginary band, a made-up band where their initials, the acronym, forms the name of the band, just like ELP. So, so it is real musicians brought together like a supergroup and write them in to, to, to me, Rick, at planetrock.com or planetrock.com forward slash Rick and we can't wait to see what you come up with. I've got one already. I've got yeah. Wakeman, Anderson, Nina, as in Nina, Suspo uh, Nina Simone, N and Keith, as in Keith Emerson. Yeah, there you go. And that spells W A. No, probably can't have that one, <laughs> can we? <laughs> but you get the idea. That's do, the sort of thing yeah. we're looking for. OK, we've got some more, we've got some more songs that people have written in that they like played at their funerals or weddings and remember that was that's this week's theme next week's theme of course is band acronyms and because uh, my special co-host this week is my great friend Keith Emerson of course ELP is an acronym of Emerson Lake and Palmer we want you to come up with fictitious but we're well, not fictitious we want you to come up with real musicians where their surnames actually the the letters make up a word make up an acronym just like Emerson Lake and Palmer it's as simple as that and see what you can come up with I already came up with one that's already been completely ignored <laughs> by Feisty who said it, it's too rude but I'm sure you can come up with some crackers so uh, that's the theme for next week in the meantime I've got this from Ken Beatty and he says the song I will have played at my funeral is if you don't start drinking I'm gonna leave by uh, George Thorogood the last thing I want is people feeling miserable and saying what a nice bloke I was uh, I would rather they went and got ratted uh, probably <laughs> at my expense um, well yeah I mean why not I mean uh, the thing is I mean you're not gonna be there so does it really matter 
you know, and, and if you are aware and you're lying there, then you'll know that any minute now it's going to get a bit hot. <laughs> what you got, Keith? This is from Dave uh, in Hornchurch. Uh, yeah. At my funeral, I would like King Arthur played. <laughs> If I've suffered dying, then I don't see why others shouldn't suffer too. <laughs> I, I thoroughly agree with him, and all I can say is if you pop off next week, I'll come and play it personally. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I have come up with another acronym of a band, uh, which I think is really good, because I know you said the other one wasn't to be allowed. Yeah. Remember, this is for next week's, uh, next week's uh, theme, uh, acronym of real musicians to form a band you know, like Emerson, Lake and Palmer, which becomes ELP, ELP. Uh, I've come up with David Coverdale, let's yeah. so see, um, uh, Trevor Rabin, uh, as in uh, Trevor Rabin, obviously yeah. the guitar player, uh, John Anderson, yeah. and Ian Pace, yeah. uh, which, <laughs> really which, great, which reads, crap. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you get the idea. Uh, let's see what you can come up with next <laughs> next week. <laughs> but we need a conclusion for this week. Uh, the conclusion of um, of what you like played at your wedding at, or funeral. Uh, we have sort of come to a conclusion that basically you only go two ways: you either get burn or get eaten by worms. So my personal view is: who gives a toss what they play really at your, yeah. at your funeral? And uh, basically, uh, I, I'm not really sure what to do. Uh, as, a, as the best wedding song because mm. to the best of my knowledge nobody's actually written a song yet about uh, which is called basically Take My House <laughs> um, <laughs> I, Close to Losing Your Home yeah, yeah Close yeah. to Losing Your Home that, oh. that's good yeah um, um, Can't Find My Way Home there's got to yeah, be a good one oh, Goodbye to Everything <laughs> you know some, some, <laughs> something like that um, yeah. Keith it's been an absolute pleasure having you here i do hope you will come and, and grace us again i'd love to it's an Rick, absolute, yeah. absolute joy yeah. and may i just say uh if you're no you've not been particularly well richie uh, it's great to see you looking so fit and so well thank you thank you uh, and yes. uh have fun with his norton commando and we'll see you all next week yeah and uh david get well <laughs> absolutely <laughs> speed, speedy recovery i think he prefers a david get bigger get bigger, <laughs> bigger.